for the first like one to two hours, and then things will shit will fall apart. Um, and I'm really relying on you as capable developers, as people ex with experience in React, to figure out stuff on your own, uh, ask questions, ask help each other. Um, and we're, we're definitely not going to finish much today. I just want you to get your feet wet and understand what is possible so that you can go figure it out yourself. This is all I can do in three hours. Um, so a uh, bit about myself. I have uh, done React for two years, Gatsby for one year, um, briefly joined the Gatsby team, um, working on some internal stuff, and then uh, uh, got a better offer at Netlify. <laughs> um, but, I, but I think that Gatsby is a significant uh, innovation in the React space. I think it helps counter a lot of the problems with React. And uh, people yell about JavaScript frameworks being heavy and being uh, having issues with performance. I think this really solves that, um, just like Next.js as well, uh, but in a different way. And we'll talk a little bit about why Jamstack. I think a lot of people um, are confused by this term. I was confused even when I joined Netlify. Netlify is not the creator of Jamstack, but uh, strongly promotes it because uh, it's a CDN first hosting company. Um, but I'm, here, I'm not here to talk about Netlify. I'm just here to talk about the idea in general and whether what use cases it suits. Um, so. OK, so, um, so hopefully everyone has downloaded this uh, GitHub um, uh, repo. Um, we're about to get started. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is to immediately um, go to the GitHub repo. Where is it? Um, OK, so we have notes and a sample site uh, in the GitHub repo. Um, and inside the, the notes, this will take a while, so I just want you to get started with it first. There's a welcome page. Uh, it just lists some, uh, the, the, the lesson plan for today, as well as some basics that you probably already have. Um, <coughs> and then if you go to the first one, uh, the jam, intro to Jamstack. Um, so I'm going to ask you to kick off a build while we talk so that um, you can see the whole process start to finish. So I'm going to just click to deploy uh, my dimension starter. It's going to link to uh, the Amplify console. Uh, that's, the, that's the tool that we're using for today. Um, hopefully, everyone has an AWS account. Um, if not, uh, this is where you start signing in and all that. Um, it may require a credit card, I'm not sure. But um, I mean, virtually everyone uses AWS. Um, uh, and if, if not, you can use Netlify. Netlify does not require a credit card, but um, I'm, uh, I'm basing on, on AWS today. Um, so if you, if you log in, you, you get to this flow. Uh, it's basically just going to deploy that, that site that we chose. Um, and we're just going to click Connect to GitHub. Um, I'm already connected. Uh, you may need to log in uh, on your own. Um, it says GitHub authorization was successful for me. Um, again, uh, if you're not logged in, and if you're doing this for the first time, you may need to do some authorization. I'm going to go with the default name. Um, I don't think I have this default name already. And Yep, and it's creating my app. OK, so, so I want you to do that. This is the uh, dimension starter. We're also going to clone overreactor.io. If everyone knows, that's uh, Danny Bromov's blog from the React core team. Uh, we're also going to clone that. Let's just do it. Um, so I, I, I opened that link in, in the intro to Jamstack uh, notes. Is anyone lost? Raise your hand. OK. Who's lost? OK, um, what's, where, where did I lose you? Sorry? Yeah, it, um, you, uh, you, click this, you click this link, and it opens to, a new, uh, opens to a new window. And you just follow the instructions all the way through. The link is in Jamstack, Jamstack Jumpstart Notes 01, Intro to Jamstack. Do you have AWS account? Yes. Um, if you don't, uh, you, can, you can choose to sign up for one, or you can try to use Netlify as well. Uh, but I won't be teaching that uh, today. I can, I can cover that later on. Um, <coughs> Um, I realized, again, I realized I should have put that in the instructions, like people should sign up for AWS first. Um, so uh, apologies for that. I didn't really, didn't really uh, I, I think I just assumed that people would have it. Um, OK, and, and if, you're, if you're lost, I try to ask someone next to you. OK, so, um, so I'm just going to deploy those two sites. There's other sites that you can deploy as well. Um, but I just want to give you the sense of that's all the work it takes to uh, start deployment in a Jamstack world. Uh, it really is. You're taking that source code, you're copying, you're cloning it over, and you're pushing it to the servers. Um, and it's very, it's very light. Uh, oh, um, the, one, the one with overreactor.io, you got to change the name of it, because um, they don't allow dots in the name. Um, so I'm going to clone this again. 
Uh, this is this is the overreactor.io clone. If you look at the URL, it's too small for you to see, but it has it's just a GitHub thing. That's that's all the link does. Um, so I click connect to GitHub, and instead of that name, I'm going to change that name to something else that has no dots in it. Um, things are very slow suddenly. Is it all of you guys downloading shit? Um, okay, uh, overreactor.io jsconf whatever. Uh, just no dots in in the name. Um, I already complained to AWS about the validation there. They should uh, validate properly. OK, so I just want you to get started. That, that, that thing we'll be building and kicking off. <coughs> and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but now I just need to give you this intro to Jamstack. Um, all of you already saw this. Don't worry about it. Uh, what is Jamstack? Jam Jamstack stands for JavaScript APIs and Mockup. Um, and that's, uh, that's a very silly name, right? Like every, every app uses JavaScript APIs and Mockup in some way. Uh, why is this such a big deal? Um, and so, so I want to give you the context from, from where we're coming from and, and uh, make, try to make sense of what, um, what this all is. Uh, so uh, in the beginning, like, th the very first website was a Jamstack site. right? Like, this, is, this is from, uh, I think, CERN. Um, and it was just vanilla HTML and, and just some links, and you could link, you could link around. Um, and then we needed more, uh, and then I'm just going to have more memes because I like <laughs> like some presentation style. And then we needed more, uh, and we, we started serving things from an origin server. Um, and then we wanted more dynamic cap capability. Um, so we wanted to have a program running behind it to dynamically generate some, some sites. So for example, I can have a counter, and it shows the current time uh, as, of, as of the time that you visit it. Should I be sitting down? I feel like you can actually see it. Um, so, so then. Uh, we all need some persistence, so we started adding databases behind this, the server. So, uh, and that's how you get Wikipedia, for example. Right? Um, but then there's a problem with this. Uh, and and, and so, so the open source stack to all of this um, is be, it basically became LAMP. That was the dominant paradigm from 1990s to 2000. <coughs> um, towards the late parts of the 2000s, we started with one more dynamic stuff on the, on the client side, the front end. Right? So we started to innovate on the JavaScript angle. Notice there was no JavaScript in any of this, right? And now there's a little bit of JavaScript on the client side, right? Uh, we start using MooTools, jQuery, U, uh, YUI, whatever, um, and and eventually, like, we started to run into problems on it with this stack because um, we start to have scaling issues, and so so we have to throw in some caching, right? At, at intermediate layers, we have different names for all of these caches, like Redis or whatever, um, but. Uh, and, and then we introduced this idea of a CDN. We put a CDN in front of our origin layer. A lot of you have done this in your own setup, and a lot of you just haven't worried about it. But uh, these are the kinds of things that, that start, start to be introduced at scale. Um, and you start having all these problems with monitoring, versioning, replication, f uh, fingerprinting, um, and, and even more, like security stuff. Basically, uh, when you run to raise uh, money from a VC, you, you make a deck like this, and you put uh, the, the text like slightly askew, and you say, pain points. Uh, and these, these are the pain points that we solved. So, so basically, what is the pain points? I mean, what's the origin of all this? Um, like, like, this is modern infrastructure that, that we build up piece by piece. Never really plan for it to all stick together. Uh, and what is the source of it? It's really uh, basically the running server. Like, we have to scale it. Uh, we have to manage it. Uh, it'd be ideal if we don't. So um, it really boils down to security, reliability, and complexity, which, which is uh, correlated with cost. Um, I, have a, I, have a, I have a link, actually, from... Um, does everyone know who Wes Boss is? Um, Wes Boss is one of the best JS developers in the world. Um, he runs a server. And when people order his stickers, he, his, his server crashes. Um, and uh, server slowness, you folks totally crashed my server. Uh, someone was trying to subscribe to his course. Uh, the server crashed, so he lost the login. Um, making your own server is hard. Uh, his, own, his own site 404 is just because um, he just set it up wrong. Like, experts get it wrong. Um, how can we make it easier, right? So that's the, that's the context that we start from. Um, the other thing that started happening is JavaScript started eating the world, right? Um, we went from JavaScript on the front end. We had, we had all these, like, it was a toy language from ES1, ES2, ES3, and then there was 10 years that we did nothing. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's a fun story. And then now, it's, now we have a yearly cadence, and TC39 is actually a pretty serious organization. Um, 
Will Smith again. Okay, so, so then we started breaking, trying to break apart the, uh, so, so we had frameworks come out of it. We, had, we started, went from jQuery to like backbone knockout uh, Angular. Um, and, we, and then we also started eating the, the, we looked at the back end and we said, why do you know JavaScript? Um, so obviously we started turning out JavaScript on the back end, uh, popularized by MongoDB uh, with Mongo Express, uh, Angular, and Node. Uh, and so now we have this full JavaScript landscape, right? Full stack JS, um, which is like, that's kind of what I like to talk about at a, at a JS conf, like, JavaScript slowly, if anything can be rewritten, rewritten in JavaScript, it will be. Um, that's called Edward's Law. He's one of the co-founders of uh, Stack Overflow. Um, so this, this all is fine, but we're just reinventing little parts of like, the lab stack, just like replacing parts of it with JS. <coughs> and that's why we have the myth of the, the full stack uh, developer like <coughs> having to know everything from Postgres all the way to CSS. Um, so the problems with, but the problems with this, like we, we, we've only replaced the LAMP stack with like JS versions of the LAMP stack. Like we haven't really done anything. We, we still have this, we have different logos, but we have the same uh, sort of caching and uh, security issues. Um, so, and, and the, the big one is performance. The, the, the bigger and bigger uh, JS bundles on the, on the front end uh, get, um, the, the, more, the more load it has, especially for mobile users. I'm sure uh, everyone here knows about that. Uh, the, the, the performance studies, all the scare, scare numbers, but uh, my favorite is the 4% of mobile users who throw their phones while waiting and <laughs> being super, super frustrated. Um, yeah, I value, but I, I, I have a very thick case on my phone, so it's very drop proof, but yeah, I can probably throw it if I want to. Um, the, uh, according to Alex Russell, one of the, one of the Google Chrome DevRels, um, the ideal budget for your, for your first load uh, should be 130 to 170 KB of critical, critical path resources. Let's just call it all JavaScript. Uh, React alone is uh, 30, 40 KB, and you throw in a whole bunch of uh, dependencies that you typically put in, uh, you, you're typically busting 200. Um, before or after compression? Before. Because it, uh, uh, they care about parsing time as well. That's the time they're interactive. It all counts in there. Um, we'll, have a, we'll have some charts as well. Um, so, so this is literally doing the math. If, if like on a 3G network, you want to have a five second load, you work, you work backwards on the, on the transfer rates, um, do you set a budget of 130 to 170? I recommend his blog post. It's a pretty good read uh, on, on, on where you need to be in terms of uh, performance budgets. Um, <coughs> uh, conversely, uh, this is a log of uh, general JavaScript bundles overall. Uh, we, we, we passed that 130, 170 KB mark in 2011. Um, we're currently now at 400 KB uh, for the median uh, desktop and mobile uh, bundle. And, that, and that's, that's, those, are, those are the sort of like the, the fat JavaScript bundle. Like when React Scripts, what React Scripts does is just it generates a fat JavaScript bundle for you, right? Uh, it does a little bit of code splitting, but that's it. Um, so it would be nice to uh, improve the performance and the time to interactive up there. Um, and so, and so uh, this, is, this is kind of the, the performance issues that, that, we, that we start dealing with. Like, we have the initial request. This is the original uh, nice, n nice request. And then we have all this like, fat JavaScript. And that really blocks. The, the more requests you have, it really blocks the, the time to be uh, able to, to render this. So if we, if we could just render everything that we have with the original HTML request um, and slowly load the JavaScript, uh, we'd be able to uh, rapidly increase the time to interactive. Um, by default, create React app gives you an empty div. Um, it's just a blank white page. That's not very good for SEO uh, and not very good for performance as well because everything is just stuffed in your JavaScript, all, uh, everything that you write. Um, so that's, that's the client-side rendering paradigm. This is kind of the, the chart where um, you have your get, you, you, you send your get request, you get the bundle back, um, and you're rendering. This is all blocking, and therefore your time to interactive is very far out. Um, FCP is first contentful pain. Um, so as opposed to server-side rendering, why a lot of people move to Next.js, um, it's because uh, you just have the get request, they render on a server, and then they send you the, the server-side rendered uh, HTML. Um, and therefore, there's no uh, client-side rendering uh, to be executed before your, your site is interactive. Um, so, so the mean stack um, actually worsened from the lab stack in terms of it has the same issues as security, reliability, complexity, and cost. And then it added a performance thing on the front end. Um, not great, not great. Uh, it's very good news for JavaScript engineers because then we're just like employed everywhere, um, which is really nice. So there's a spectrum, but uh, I think those are not the only two choices, and that's what we're all here to learn. Um, there's the full client-side rendering on, the, on one end, and then there's full server-side rendering on the other end. There's a space in the middle to, to, to do uh, other stuff. 
So we'll talk about that. Uh, that chart is from Google, by the way. Um, meanwhile, all this is going on. I've just told a story of the past 20-something uh, years. Um, meanwhile, all this is going on. Other stuff is happening in development uh, ecosystem as well. Um, the API economy rose as well. So um, these are all companies that don't have direct customers. Their, their customers are you guys. Um, uh, and they're massively successful, and they, they, they ex just exist to uh, make parts of your life easier. That you don't, you shouldn't be writing your own uh, Stripe integration. Or, I, I mean, you, you shouldn't be writing your own payments channel, right? You should not be. Um, my favorite is Plaid. A lot of people don't know uh, here don't know Plaid, but Plaid basically integrates with all uh, banks in the U.S. I don't know if uh, they're in uh, Europe as well, but um, basically, if you want to deduct money to like start a, a startup like a Robin Hood. You just integrate with Plaid, and immediately your customers can just send you money um, from their bank accounts. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, this is stuff that you don't want to build yourself. Um, so all these APIs are just available for you to interact with. So then it's like, OK, the, the jobs of a back-end developer, of a, of a product developer, is increasingly decreased. Like The undifferentiated stuff you don't have to do. The, the, the stuff that really makes your company stand out, your project stand out, that's the th stuff that you should be focusing on. And just pay these guys to do uh, the rest. Um, because they're, they're just specialists at it. The other trend, serverless, um, launched in uh, 2014 uh, by AWS, Lambda, but uh, there was also Google App Engine before that, um, and quickly cloned by the other two big giants, uh, Google and Amazon uh, and Microsoft. Um, so that's GCP and that's Azure. Um, other way around. Uh, everyone started using Git. Ten years ago, people, Git wasn't a normal thing. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, so we wanted to take advantage of all of this to, to like try to, to try to see like what all these trends are. Everyone started using build tools. We, we went from a, an age of just including scripts um, into actually putting these things in our build processes, and, and it's part of our CI and CD process. Um, anyone know? Uh, let's, let's let's play. Obviously, this is our favorite over here. Um, uh, what's uh, what's this on the right? Roll up. Okay. Um, what's this? You know. Yes, Lint, very nice. This one this is the challenging one. So this is Google Closure Compiler. Um, it's the one that uh, face, uh, React actually uses to compile from source code to, to actually deliverable. Um, so, um, so then, we, then uh, uh, at Netlify, we started looking at all these um, static site generators as well. It's a rising trend of basically build tools coupled with Git workflow, coupled with all these other stuff. And, and we realized something that was very non-consensus at the time, which is static site generators are the next big thing. Like it's rising, and people are actually using it for to do some pretty interesting stuff. Especially with the new generation of static site generators, like like Gatsby, um, you're not just generating static HTML. Like uh, Jekyll, Hugo, those are the first generation. Just generate static HTML. That's it. You're done. Um, with Gatsby, you're you're generating HTML, sending it, and then you're also generating uh, generating a JS bundle and rehydrating it so it becomes a becomes an app. Uh, we use staticgen.com to track all these uh, static generators. Um, and it takes advantage of this, this new generation. I just, I just jumped ahead of myself. I'm sorry, over there. Um, uh, a lot of people don't know what rehydration is. Rehydration is, um, so, so it's this process of, like, we switch around the client-side app thing. So we have the initial request. And we, when we send the HTML, it already looks like that. Like, uh, there's a shell of, like, Everything that's pre-rendered, like it's the, the perceived performance, the perceived loading is super fast. Um, view painted, it can be, oh, actually, uh, yeah, so this is still HTML, view, view painting. And then uh, JavaScript, uh, by the time the JavaScript bundle arrives, um, it can actually become a dynamically loaded app. There's, a, there's an uncanny valley here where JavaScript is taking over uh, and rehydrating all the, the elements on the, on the HTML. Uh, and that's a problem that Google is actively working uh, with the two main, uh, Ga with Gatsby and Next.js to solve this, which is the uncanny valley. Um, most of us don't care about this detailed performance because it's on the order of hundreds of microseconds, um, milliseconds. Um, so anyway, just to tie it all up, all these trends, Git workflow, build tools, serverless, API economy, stack sites, um, that is the gem stack. Um, that is, that is, that's, that's, that's what enables the gem stack now versus 20 years ago. Um, so the, the focus is really on user experience. Like, uh, we just want to send markup and JavaScript to uh, your user. Um, you ping APIs if you need to to generate that markup. Um, and, but then once the, bundle, once the app is on the user side, um, you, you just interact with APIs uh, on your own with JavaScript. You, there's, no, uh, there's no running server to, to interact with. Um, the, the best parallel I, I, can, I can say about this is basically mobile phones, like mobile apps. Like, 
mobile apps are all static assets, but they're, no one accuses them of being static. They're all dynamic as, 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 as dynamic as you want. Um, Will Smith again. Uh, and, th and that kind of follows the purple pattern, like uh, push, uh, pull, I, I actually don't, don't really know the, what the PRPL stands for, but um, these are all like best practices as, as accord, uh, according to Google. Um, I honestly don't care enough. I just, I'm just like, use, because like, you're not gonna code, you're not gonna code all this by yourself. You just wanna use a framework that does it for you. Uh, and that's what Gatsby does. Uh, that's way, by, by the way, that's, that's why their uh, theme, um, their color theme is purple. Um, so so uh, in, in comparison of all the um, rendering, um, rendering paradigms, um, static, site, uh, static rendering is the easiest because you do all the work upfront ahead of time. Um, and when, when, you, when the request comes in, you just send an HTML. Um, whereas server-side rendering is a little bit slower because you do the work on request. When you, when you send the request, work is done, and then, and, then the, and, and then the render comes to you. And obviously, client-side rendering is the slowest. Um, so that's the, that's the full spectrum. Um, I honestly, I recommend this, site, uh, this uh, blog post by Adi Osmani again, uh, rendering on the web. Um, he goes in, in, into a lot more detail about um, how you can achieve, how you can pick the right level of dynamism for your project and your performance needs. Um, and I like I liked, I liked talking about what is Jamstack and what is not Jamstack so you can understand. Um, these are Jamstack static hosts. Uh, so Netlify is on there as well, uh, and, and Amplify console, um, as well as S3 bucket, GitHub pages. These are, uh, what is not Jamstack is like WordPress, Drupal, Drupal um, any it's like running server, or server side oriented things. Um, yeah, I, I could probably do this slide better. I, I should put a non Jamstack. Um, the original Jamstack site, this is still up. Um, I have this romantic idea of the unbreakable web, like the, the website where you don't have to keep a running server around. This is the original Space Jam website, uh, and it's still around. It's, it's been around for 20 years. It'll be around uh, for many more because it's just static assets, and we can keep that forever. Um, and so, so that's, that's the rough intro. Um, I, think, I, think, I think I don't have that much time to, to, to skip ahead. Um, there's, a, there's a trend also of headless CMS. Those of you who work for agencies uh, will be very familiar with um, the... So this is the rough setup, um, which is uh, when, we're, when we're building, we use, we use Git to commit to push to our, to, our, to our static site host. And we can pull in from uh, headless CMSs or, or whatever content sources um, we want. Uh, they can be uh, markdown files. They can be um, APIs that we, that we run or it's someone that we hire to do that. So headless WordPress, head, uh, Ghost is a major CMS as well. Uh, Contentful, some of you has, have used it. I think you. Um, uh, Scrivito, these are all like very, very focused on agency use cases. Like f if you need to set up a site for a non-technical user to start editing content and you're the developer that you're, you're contracted as a freelancer or something and then you hand it off, um, I think this is really good. Um, or if you just, uh, like for me personally, I can, I can do all my um, content on Airtable and it just pulls in from Airtable as well. Um, so, I, so I really like uh, all that and it's, uh, it's, all, it's all collected on head of CMS. Um, where Gatsby comes in is uh, Gatsby regards this as all the content mesh. This is their word for it. Again, their blog post, Journey to the Content Mesh, um, is, is their VC pitch, basically. Like, why, what is going on in, in, in terms of, like, why is this an investable trend? Um, and basically saying, like, all these content systems, will ingest it into GraphQL. We'll run it through our React uh, s server, or build tool. Um, and then we'll push it out to uh, static hosting, which is Netlify, Amplify, all this um, hosting. So that's the, that's the rough idea. Um, this, is, <laughs> uh, this is Brendan Eich. Uh, he always says, always bet on JavaScript. Um, so I've, I've sort of taken his quote and just made it uh, into always bet on Jamstack. Um, so that's the, that's the rough intro to uh, Jamstack. Um, like why it's, why it's a trend, why people care about it, why, why it's uh, such a big deal. Um, even though, I, I, in fact, I think JavaScript and APIs are the most boring parts of Jamstack. Actually, markup is the more interesting thing because markup is no longer static markup. It's markup that's, that's being run on the server and then again on the client. Um, and that's exactly what Gatsby does. Um, so, so I think uh, now we're at a point where, um, so, so we just finished the um, uh, intro to Jamstack piece. Um, you can have more reading over here. I, I, I have more um, information and links. I, I really like uh, Chris Coyer's talk about the all-powerful front-end developer. Um, basically, the more you can do serverlessly, the less you, the, the less you need to do on the, ser on the server side, and therefore, the more you can do um, as a front-end developer, as a product developer, as a JS developer. Um, so I really like that. OK, so um, what I'm going to have everyone do now is uh, check their Amplify console. Um, so everything should have deployed already. 
Um, <coughs> and if you see over here in my, in my console, um, when we started this session, you should already have, um, uh, have this deployed. It's, it's more or less, everyone sees the same page. Um, and when you, can, when you click on this, you can actually see um, the deployed site. Uh, it's, at, it's at some random hash, and it's something.amplifyapp.com, something like that. Yeah? Cool. Um, now, uh, um, I'm also going to go over to my overreacted I.O. Uh, clone. Um, again, that, that is the same thing. Uh, I've cloned Danny Bramov's blog uh, just by clicking a few buttons, right? So like, the potential of Jamstack is that you're just, everything is Git-based, and you can, you, uh, if it's open source, you can fork it, and you can deploy it very easily. Um, it costs you nothing. Um, and now, uh, the main thing I want you to do is it not just cloned, it also forked it to your GitHub. That's why you had the GitHub connection. So over down here, um, there's, a, there's a link to your GitHub. Uh, so if you click over there, uh, it links to that, that fork of, your, of, uh, of GitHub that, you're, um, that they created for you. Um, and now you can change anything in, in the content. So let's say uh, I'm going to change, where is the content? Source, pages. In, this is the overreacted IO source, and this is a Gatsby site, by the way. Everything we're cloning is a Gatsby site. Um, <coughs> let's say I want to change the title of this blog post, name it, name it and they will come. Um, I'm just going to change it over here, index.md, change it, and say, um, hello, JSConf Asia. Notice I'm working entirely inside of GitHub. So um, what, this, what this is doing right now is I just committed that uh, change to Git, right? Um, you can do the same thing for the Gatsby starter dimension as well. Um, you can change uh, your markdown files, you can change JavaScript, doesn't matter. What, um, what this actually does is that it will it'll start to kick off that build. Um, right. Um, so, so, and this is, the, this is the process. It starts to provision a build bot for you, um, basically like a build server. Uh, it will build, it will run Gatsby build on your, on, on your project. Um, it will deploy your site and it will verify by checking, uh, by, by taking some screenshots. If you go back to the build history, you can see our original build. Uh, this, this build is just kicked off based on my uh, updating of, of my markdown file. Um, but if you go back to the original build, you can see the entire process. Uh, provision, cloning repository, blah, blah, blah. There's no backend because I didn't deploy a backend. Um, but, but they also verify by generating all these screenshots so you can see that um, you've, uh, you, you're deploying what you expect. Um, yeah, this is my clone of over, overreactor.io. Didn't take very much. And that's the potential of Jamstack. I think that um, if everything is Git-based, uh, that's the ultimate version control for both your app as well as your content, and both can go in step with each other, which is very nice. Um, OK. so. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the first piece. Uh, I would just want to pause here and, and ask if there's, if there's anyone with questions, if they're lost. <laughs> I've been talking for a bit. No? OK. Um, all right, so now we're going to go to the intro to Gatsby part. Um, because now you have, you have two Gatsby sites. You have this site, with this, which is the uh, starter dimension site. Um, and this was created for you by, by just by clicking that button, right? Um, you have the overreactor.io site. Um, and this is created for you, uh, again, by that. These are examples or more complicated. Uh, Overreactor.io is very complicated. Uh, there, Gatsby known has like 200 lines of just configuration. Um, and and uh, I'm going to teach you how to read all this. Um, that's, the, that's the hard part. Um, <coughs> but what we're going to do now is we're going go to go to part two, which is the intro to Gatsby. OK, so uh, this one I don't have slides, but I just have uh, a rough idea. Um, so what is Gatsby? Gatsby is a site for creating websites with React.js. OK, so I just want to, I'm just going to switch over to the uh, thing here. OK. Um, so what are, what's important about knowing, uh, knowing, to know about Gatsby? So Gatsby takes content, um, um, like all sorts of content. Let's just, let's just have different kinds of content. Um, so let's just have like images. Um, JSON files, uh, markdown, um, some API requests. For example, if you want to run a, a, shop, a shop on Gatsby, you can, have a, you can ping the Shopify API, ask what's available, uh, and feed that in. So all of these become nodes. 
Um, I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. All these become nodes. Uh, some of them need to be transformed. So an image uh, may need to be transformed into, uh, for resizing, for optimal uh, image compression. Um, so like better image, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> JSON need, doesn't need any transform, so it just goes straight to. Markdown uh, needs transformations from Markdown into HTML based on Markdown. Uh, so you have a remark transform, transformer. Um, APIs, also, you're fine. Um, you may need to log in and have some authentication here. Um, but basically, the idea is to take all these nodes and wrap them up into a single GraphQL layer. Um, and then from the GraphQL, everything is fungible, everything is kind of uh, re requestable from each other. Um, <coughs> you can have pages. So the, this slash uh, pages folder is a special magic folder. Inside of this, um, every, every single page, like about.js, um, index.js, every single page can make a GraphQL request to request any single one of these things. So we're using GraphQL as a unified data layer, right? Um, <coughs> uh, with type checking, and you can prototype the, the data as well that you get from this. Um, and so there's, there's this guy, and then there's Gatsby node. Um, dot js. So pages are just by convention. Um, it will just run through everything for you. But anything else that is, that is not a standard page, for example, um, if I have a whole bunch of markdown files, um, I'm not going to specify, all right, day one dot js, day two dot js, day three dot js. That's stupid. Instead, I'm going to have a template, day uh, template dot js. Inside of my Gatsby node, I'm going to say, take all these markdown files and run it through Gatsby.js and programmatically generate page one, two, three, four, five, as, as many as I want. Um, same thing for images, same thing for JSON. Basically, standard format for, for consuming all this, coming into here, GraphQL, and then this is all React, right? You're requesting it. Um, so it does one server-side render into um, index, uh, into HTML, as well as a whole bunch of different um, JavaScript bundles um, sorry. So there's a, uh, there's a lot of different HTML as well. So every single route has its own HTML folder. So if you turn JavaScript off, if your, if your SEO is, uh, if your search engine uh, doesn't run your JavaScript, it's fine because you can read everything on your page. Um, but then it also generates the JavaScript bundle so that on the client side, it rehydrates into a full single page app. So as you navigate from index to about, it no longer requests the HTML because it just requests uh, the remaining data that it needs. Okay, so hopefully that was like, it's the first time I ever did that, but <laughs> um, am I missing anything? No, I think I'll just show you. Um, okay, so, um, so, so this is the exercise that I'm going to hopefully get you to start. Um, I, hope, I hope it won't go off the rails that quickly, uh, but we'll see. So, uh, so the repo I, have you, I, have you, I had you clone uh, has notes, right? And that's the thing that you've been reading. Um, but it also has a site. Um, so over on the site, um, I think I've left, I left, I filled in quite a lot of stuff, um, but I want you to be able to fill, fill stuff in yourself. Um, if you, if you npm install the dependencies inside of site, um, actually I'm just going to go ahead and, sorry? Um, no, I, I think I, I think I, so I, I, what I did was I had a git subtree by accident. Um, so I just need to remove git, git in it, git in. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry about that. I um, I wasn't hiding things from you on purpose. <laughs> Okay, so um, if you git pull again, it sh git pull force, um, it should be. Yep, I see. I see the site on my on the site now. <coughs> okay, cool. Um, so so we're not going to go to the uh, data, uh, data stuff, and I, I left. Um, 
let's just nuke, um, let's just go into uh, slash page, uh, source slash pages. Can everyone see this? Oh, this is dark. Okay. The color theme, light. Ah, much better, right? Um, okay, so we're just going to nuke all this, this entire thing. Um, uh, so I'm in source slash index dot js uh, slash source slash pages slash index dot js right um, and I'm just gonna have this simple thing here saying page one um, uh, and that's and that's that's the, that's all the comment that um, that's all I need to do to um, to get this started so um, make sure to install uh, npm install uh, so that all the dependencies are installed as well <laughs> sorry I'm not I'm not very well organized um, but all right uh, I'm gonna run your and start and kick that off. Uh, the main thing it runs is Gatsby develop. Um, now it's compiling all the pages. And, and so you can see, um, ooh. Ah. Hang on. I have a, I have a spare page. Uh. Um, okay, it looks like it looks like I committed something uh, that I should not have. Um, so I think if you just if you just name this site title query two, it should be fine <laughs> inside of off layout. See, I was trying to like save all the work uh, that you need to do. Unfortunately, I don't think I did it very well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna commit this to Git as well, so you can just pull um, fix. Um, Okay, so my index.html has this has this page one. Um, can everyone get here? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, why don't we watch some YouTube while we're? <laughs> um, uh, questions on this? Does this make sense? No, uh, Gatsby comes with it. Uh, in fact, it's a it's a it's a pro and a con. The pro is that everything has a standard data layer, and you can prototype very easily. The con is that it takes a while to spin up, so it's a bit slower. Um, but I think you trade the upfront power. Uh, you trade the upfront startup time for uh, overall power. I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's a request. Um, so I, I know people are npm installing. Uh, I'm not really sure what to cover now. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, just real quick. Yeah. Um, I find you JWS because I haven't set it up yet. And it's requiring like to call me and shit. And I've got a Singaporean cell phone, so it's not really going to work. What, what, AWS? Yeah, because I, I think okay. they have to call me to like register. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, just skip oh, it. Netify. Yeah. Netify. Yeah. Okay. I think that's why it's not because my AWS is suspended anyway. Right. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I mean, I've just, I've just been instructed to use a, uh, AWS for this tool, but then there's, there's other static site hosts that you can use as well. Okay, so um, I just want to give you the idea that um, just by convention, um, anything inside of pages, anything that's a JavaScript file is, is, and has an export default is a, is a page that you can, that you can start rendering. Um, so it's a little bit like uh, Next.js as well, like that's magic pages folder. Um, and, it's, and it's different from React scripts because uh, React scripts doesn't have anything right by default. So this sets up routing for you as well as um, code splitting. Every single page is code splitted. Um, based on based on the page boundary, so uh, let's set up a different page like about.js, um, and I'm going to import React as well, uh, or I can write my own. Um, uh, export default function return h1 about page. Um, so, so that's it. I, I just created that JS file. Uh, I created the about page. I think it recompiled, so I didn't, don't even have to restart the server. 
Uh, and now if I go to uh, localhost 8000 slash about, uh, it's going to show me my about page. Right? So very, like, you didn't even set up routing, which is fantastic. Um, uh, although, although you probably need to put links between them. Um, one thing I like to show people um, that uh, stuff is being statically rendered uh, is in the network tab. When I refresh, I get an about.html. This is an HTML document. Um, oh, I've actually not service I rendered this. Okay, so, so uh, in development, this doesn't work, but in production, you actually will see inside the preview the, the pre rendered page, which is pretty cool uh, to, to prove that it's just HTML and Node.js. Um, okay, and if you type any random characters inside it um, and just like get a 404 page, um, oh shit, I'm sorry. Uh, I have screwed this up as well. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, but it's, it, it gives you a development 404 page with, with all the dark of all the pages that you've created. Um, so that's a that's the that's the rough idea. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you uh, to it right now uh, in terms of um, the exercises. So where we are now is intro to Gatsby. Uh, we're making pages, um, and we're gonna make a component a layout component. This is pure React. You make a you make a folder, call it whatever the hell you want. Make a file, call it whatever the hell you want. Make a layout component that renders children. And you import that into your page and reuse that code. Um, a layout component is very useful to have consistent layouts between your pages, right? Right now, I don't have any consistency between my page pages. What if I made a React component, uh, imported it from there, and then used it in both, both pages? Um, so I, I would like you to do that and just get familiar with the development flow. Um, and look at the rest of the, the if, you're, if you're slightly ahead of the rest of us, uh, look at the rest of the, the, the docs as well. Um, well oh, um, I'll show you one thing as well for, for, for those, part, those people who are at the graphical layer. Um, so lo localhost 8000 is, is where all the sites is, uh, but underscore, triple underscore GraphQL. This is where uh, the graphical layer is, um, where you can start querying all the, uh, the, the pages. So here I think we have site page. Um, you can just Google, you can just look around as to like what the nodes are. Uh, um, and you can see what, uh, what I talked about. Like right now we're consuming JavaScript files <coughs> and it's setting up pages. <coughs> so um, these, are, these are pretty helpful. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't navigate the, around these a lot just because I know I, I don't need it, but um, it's pretty helpful for figuring out graphical. Um, <coughs> Where's site title? <coughs> yeah, I want you. I want to. I want to query site metadata. Okay. Um, so the the place to query is site. Dot site metadata. I'm going to query all of this. All of this stuff. See if I can get anything. By the way, this explorer on the left is a new addition to the GraphQL ecosystem. It was done by uh, my friend Sean Grove at OneGraph. Um, and it's, you, us you used to have to type. Uh, who has time for that, right? <laughs> um, so I think the, the way to request site metadata. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I'm doing this right. Hang on. Yeah, okay, so if I request title, description, author, author anything, um, I, can, I, can see, I can start seeing my site metadata. Um, <coughs> um, so this is configured inside of gatsby-config.js. This is the starting point for all Gatsby projects. All Gatsby projects must have a Gatsby config.js. This is your. This is where you pass in any data. It's a free-form JSON object. You can pass in whatever you want. Uh, Gatsby infers the types. Uh, here I've only passed strings, but you can put numbers, arrays, whatever, um, and it and it infers the types, and you can start querying it from your GraphQL. Um, and so where that is starting to become interesting is inside of your pages. So let's say inside of my page, and this is super annoying. I'm going to get rid of it. Inside of my page, inside of uh, index.js, I want to request. I want to. I want to uh, use my site metadata. So I'm going to use site data. Well, what was my instructions? I need to check my own instructions. 
use static query. <laughs> okay. um, so let's say I use static query. Um, and I'm going to use static query inside of here. Uh, data equals. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking too much. but OK. And then I'm just going to render it out over here. I do need to wrap in a GraphQL tag. Good spot. Um, yeah. OK, so let's see, what's, uh, let's see what's going on in my site. Localhost 8000. Uh, invalid regular expression flag. Yeah, there you go. Um, OK, cool. So, so I can now use GraphQL inside of my page to request something that is at the site level. Because I've consumed all that, inf that JSON information into my GraphQL, I request it, pass it into index.js. Because I'm using that GraphQL as a, a GraphQL query, as a, as a static query. And it's starting to feed into my statically rendered site. Um, so, so I did this on my index.js. I want you to do it on the uh, layout. Uh, follow the instructions inside the, inside the markdown file um, over here. I think, I've, I think I've been very explicit about what to do. Um, so yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll just do this for the next half hour, and then uh, I'll, I'll start back up at 2.30. OK? All right. <laughs> and just mess around, and, just, uh, and uh, there's uh, extra homework if you want at the bottom. Uh, the exercises, as well as the SEO component. How's that? <laughs> I just talked for one hour. <laughs> if, you, if you need water, uh, there's water at the back. Yeah. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, I didn't catch fully what your experience was earlier. You said that you tried out Gatsby, you had some uh, reservations about it. Um, is there anything I can answer for you? I mean, uh, in general, now I'm, I'm trying to build like an app with Gatsby, and there's some unexpected behavior. Um, yeah, so basically anything relying on window methods and all that. Yeah, that, but also, for some reason, I get component did mount when it shouldn't be called. Ah. Okay, with a regular React app, it wouldn't be called yeah. twice. Yeah. Instead, component did update should should have been called. Oh, for shit. some reason, with Gatsby, some things like that sometimes happen. Maybe it's something <laughs> with development, maybe it's something with production. I have no idea. Um, that's that's something I'm not quite sure, but there's a lot of things going on behind, behind that. Gatsby. There's so many things that it's hard to tell what is the source of the problem. Yeah. And this is the yeah. problem that, that I, I get with, uh, with Gatsby. And I have similar problems with uh, Next.js or with Gatsby. If you want to have dynamic routes, not static ones, let's say you have um, dynamically loaded content, something like WordPress, for example, if you write blog posts and stuff like that, and you want it to be. Um, you don't want to have a static page, page for all your tutorials. You want them to be uh, dynamically generated. Um, if you want to have something non-static in your website, it's a problem to have with Casper. Mm, yeah. See, like, I don't know how to you, do that. You have, um, I haven't run into this lifecycle thing. Uh, the, the main areas I run into problems is uh, is anything relying on window, window methods. So you just need to make sure to, to wrap that. Yeah, but that. If I have that, then I, I always... Um, export it into a dedicated module, I check if Windows exists, if not then I do like a different kind of handling. Uh, but there are stuff like with, with the roots and the life cycle, like weird stuff that I don't know why. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Alright, um, you know, file issues, all that. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it's, uh, it is early stage tech in, in the sense that it like... It has to be exist for uh, quite a while, I think. Three years? So, uh, I think they, uh, they, they got a lot of money to, to work on that, so I'm quite surprised. Actually, not that much. How much do you think they got? A few million dollars. Three million. And they hired 35 people. It's not a lot. Okay. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't represent them. I'm just... So there are 35 I'm just people for one framework. 
I think that's, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, they're building like a preview platform and other en enterprise services. Uh, so it's not all developers. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah. Talk for one hour. <laughs> Hello. Ooh, okay. Um, that's our timer. If you ever need a timer, uh, just Google countdown timer, and Google will build it right in for you. Um, it's pretty nice. And uh, the music station is Free Cool Cam Radio. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so I, again, I don't expect everyone to have uh, to have done everything, but I just uh, at least you get your hands dirty um, writing your own Gatsby stuff. Um, and we're just gonna plow right on. Uh, we just we don't have that much time. Um, I'm a little bit behind, but I think I'm okay. Um, so uh, just just so just so you're aware of where we are, I, I'm I'm inside the the, the repo, and uh, we're in part three now, Gatsby plugins. Okay, um, I think that Gatsby plugins, so it's possible to use Gatsby based on the starters that you choose. You can use a whole bunch of starters. Uh, here's the starter library. Um, it's gatsbyjs.org slash starters. You can get started just by cloning any single one of these things. You click the GitHub. You've already been through the process. Clone it down to your repo. Change a few files. All done for you. Um, 200 starters. Um, some of them are not so high quality. So just uh, um, so fun fact, I actually made this. I, I made this showcase, and I was very insistent on the fact that I could filter by uh, use case. So for example, if I want to search for an e-commerce starter, um, this shows me how to use Gatsby with Shopify um, and Stripe. Um, if I want uh, authentication, um, this has Firebase authentication, AWS Amplify authentication. Uh, this is my personal one, Jamstack Hackathon Starter. Um, basically, you know, look through the use cases. There's a lot of different things. It's, it's as flexible as JavaScript can be. Um, but starters are just repos that you clone. And then once you clone it, you, it's on, it's, you're, you're on your own, right? Uh, no one's going to maintain your stuff for you. Um, plugins are a pre-bundled set of capabilities. Um, and that's where the plugins uh, library is. Um, it's gatsbyjs.org slash plugins. Uh, and you have a whole bunch of them. Uh, a lot of them are, like, it's not very clear why you would use them. Um, I think that in, if there's one problem in our industry in general is that we don't write enough documentation. <laughs> um, so, so if you can help with the docs, it's, it's, always, it's always a good idea. But also, um, I also made this thing, this link, C, C starters using this. Um, so you can link back to the starter page and filter by starters that use that thing. Um, so you can, uh, if, if even if you don't have documentation, you can use you can see working examples that use it, which is kind of good enough. Um, <coughs> okay, so uh, there's a lot of different plugins. All of them do vaguely different things based on the APIs that are available to get uh, to Gatsby. Um, so the uh, the main one that we're going to start dealing with is Gatsby Source File System. Gatsby source file system looks through your, your, your uh, the, uh, uh, folder that you give it, and it ingests everything inside it as a node. It's very dumb. That's it. It has no idea, like, it like, maybe knows, like, the, based on the extension, what file type it is. That's it. It's not going to say, it's, it's going to take in a markdown file, and it's just going to say, all right, this, is, this node is of type markdown. But it's not going to convert it to HTML for you. You have to do that on your own. It's not going to convert, it's going to convert it, uh, it's not going to convert to, like, JS or whatever. It's not going to process your images for you. It's just going to say, all right, I have a path to that image. That's it. Um, so I have the source plugin. Um, there will be a lot of, remember, remember what I said about the API economy, that all these services with APIs out there that you want to access? Uh, there's a lot of plugins. There's 990 something, 908 uh, plug, uh, plugins. And I think this is actually a big source of power for Gatsby. Because every plugin that someone else writes is immediately code that you can use. Uh, it's a network effect of all the different data sources that, that can come into your app. Um, 
So whatever, whatever it is, um, you're then going to want to transform them. So there's the source plugin, and then there's a transform. Um, and there's, there's other smaller types of plugins. Um, and fun fact, plugins can have plugins. So even inside of this plugin, I can have my little children plugins. Um, and this is, uh, and, and that's, just, that's just because how big Markdown is. Uh, so imagine writing a Markdown folder and um, you put in a URL of a tweet and it just generates that tweet component for you. That's a plugin, that's the OEmbed plugin. Um, uh, and, 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 all, and, all sorts of, um, and all sorts of things. So basically, uh, the, 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 na the main, the main uh, area you search is here. Uh, the naming syntax is not enforced, so some of them can be named something else, but they're actually doing that job. Um, I'm, I've complained to them about that. Uh, I think that they should fix that. <laughs> um, but basically, uh, let's, let's just kind of go through the, the plugin material. Um, uh, so, so, yeah. So earlier, earlier we already, uh, um, I'm just going to go in, in here. So earlier, we already familiarized ourselves with the site metadata. It's a, just a JSON blob that we can request our title from, uh, our site title from. But now we're going to concern ourselves with the plugins array inside of here. Um, right now, it's uh, empty, I think. Um, yeah, I've just left it empty as a, as a comment field. Um, we're going to start using uh, Gatsby source file system. So the syntax of plugins, if you're using it without options, it's just a string. Uh, here I have Gatsby plugin here. I, 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 it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's very simple, and it's nice to see a whole bunch of strings. But once you need to start to apply, once you need to supply uh, options, um, that's where you get to start this pretty ugly syntax where it's like resolve and then the plugin name and then options and then it's an arbitrary JSON again of whatever you want to pass in. Um, this, looks, uh, this looks ugly, but it's very expressive because you can use JavaScript to create the object however way you like. You can combine it in different ways. You can fetch data from somewhere else and pull it in. It's really up to you how you want to um, uh, create these options. So it's, uh, it's maximum expressiveness. So um, so what, what I'm going to do and demo for you here is to implement the Gatsby source file system plugin. We've already NPM installed it. Uh, uh, most most uh, Gatsby setups will have it installed, but just double check in case you get an unrecognized error. Um, so over here, I have a Gatsby source file system. Um, it's cons it's, I'm teaching it to consume one of the folders, right? Um, here I have some sample content inside of source slash, um, inside of slash content. I have my first post. This is Markdown. Uh, this thing at the top is front matter. That's metadata for your posts. That's data about your posts. Um, that's my second post. So I want it to consume stuff. So I'm going to uh, get it to uh, consume it. Um, I'm going to give it a name like content. I'm going to give it a path. Uh, I don't need this path.join because I can just use their name. Um, and I'm going to say content. Uh, their name is uh, a Node.js concept. Um, I, I think a lot of people know, but I wasn't, I wasn't that clear. So their name is just the current working directory of the, the, the folder that you are running uh, this, this process from, right? So, so current, my current working directory is uh, jamstack jumpstart slash site. Um, that's, my, that's my current working directory. Um, so when I, when, I, when I say their name, I have their name uh, slash content. Um, that is going to be... Uh, site slash content, and then everything inside this folder is going to be markdown files that is consumed, right? Um, so, so I have that I have that set up, and that's my that's our first plugin. Um, and if I run yarn start again, uh, which is Gatsby develop under the hood, um, <coughs> we're going to see uh, in our graphical. Um, we're going to see in our graphical new nodes. Remember what I said about nodes? These are all nodes. Um, in this case, it's a file. Um, that's, what, that's what the source plugin adds for you. Um, it has an ID, uh, but it also has uh, absolute path. Let's just do the path, uh, relative path, whatever. So you can see over here that um, now Gatsby has a sense of what my, what my uh, files are. Um, I can add in a third post. Let's just really bang it over the head with this one. Because um, I think this is one. Of, this is where people start to start to trip up because it's no longer just JS. It's uh, understanding the APIs of Gatsby. Um, I don't know if it hot reloads. I hope so. Um, 
Yay, hot reloads. OK, so, so pretty clear, right? Um, so now we have to take this, and then we have to transform it. So that's the next part of my thing. Um, Styling, uh, same thing. Uh, you need to do server-side rendering. Uh, it takes advantage of other stuff. Uh, we're just going to skip that because I don't have time. Uh, but definitely try to practice it because um, that avoids the flash of unstyled content that you get with uh, CSS and JS, right? Uh, if you want to use uh, something CSS and JS like style components, um, you want to definitely server-side render that styling. Um, so we explained source plugins already. Um, this gives you an idea of what else source plugins you can get. Um, <laughs> I just went through this exercise. I'm sorry. Um, OK, so now we're going to transform the source, the markdown files, right? Like here we know, here we know they're, they're markdown files. We're going to transform them with Gatsby Transformer Remark. Um, that's the, where the hell is my? OK. Um, <coughs> so we're just, we don't need options. We're just going to stick it in there. Um, so it's going to be in, just in here. Um, order does matter, so you want to place uh, you want to place the thing that works on the previous thing uh, after the thing. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> uh, Remark itself has has extra plugins and options. Uh, go definitely go read those uh, things because it's very very useful for your content writing, especially if you're writing uh, pretty dynamic content. Uh, my personal uh, my personal project is I want to embed YouTube in, like I want to put a YouTube link and it just inflates into a nice YouTube logo inside of my markdown, which is pretty cool. The less JS I write, the better, right? The JS should only be for dynamic custom stuff. Um, but if it's just straight content, um, let's just leave it all to markdown. So I have Gatsby Transformer Remark. Um, um, and, and now I have to do the thing where I say, OK, I, uh, everything's in graphical. Uh, I'm going to show, show that later. But now I have to do the thing where I say I have a template for all the markdown, and I'm going to programmatically generate uh, for each file, markdown, 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 run it through the template, and generate that uh, HTML every time. <coughs> Let's actually show you um, the markdown. So look here. Um, there's, there's only all directory, all file, all site page. Um, it's, it's very small, so you can't see it. But OK. So no mention about markdown, right? Um, when I kill it and refresh it, um, it should, because now I have the plugins. Uh, I need to reinstall it. What? It's lame. Um, OK, uh, well, you're going to have to reinstall it as well, because I didn't, I didn't include it. I thought I did. Huh. OK, my bad. Um, yeah, uh, you have to install the dependency Gatsby Transformer Remark. Um, that's that's just because I I left it out. Um, okay, so if I refresh this, um, now you can see inside of my graphical, I have this new thing called All Markdown Remark, um, which is uh, not a super intuitive name, but uh, it's good enough where we can start uh, seeing uh, the content that we ad added in. So here, first post, second post, third post. Um, now it's not just the file path, right? Now I'm reading the file and parsing it into these things, which guess what? It's, I can query from GraphQL inside of my React uh, components. Uh, you've already started to do that a little bit on the site level. Now we are doing it on the content level. Um, so. Um, what we need to do is we need to, we need to basically do this query, do this all markdown remark query, um, get this array of nodes, and then for each node, we'll, we'll pass this into our, um, our template as props. The props will do whatever you want with them, right? We just render JSX, and then that will be your, your generated page. Okay. To do that, oh, shit. Um, my computer died. No, I might. OK. This is, this is showing, but OK. All right. Sorry. Um, so to do that, I'm going to walk you through it. I'm being extra careful with this, because this is where people really screw up. Um, so so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use this default template that I put in my own notes. Um, it's pretty much going to be exactly the same. Uh, actually, I think I already provided it. Source, templates. Oh, no, I don't have it. So. I'm going to make a page template.js. 
in here, and I'm going to paste it in there. Um, it should be pretty much, yeah, exactly that. Okay. Um, so that's inside my source slash templates folder. Just be very aware what what folder we're working in. Um, we had some people with issues earlier. Um, so inside of Gatsby node.js, we're going to create pages programmatically. Um, I'll copy and paste this in, and then I'll explain what the code does. Um, okay. So that um, what I copied from from our notes should be the only thing that is in Gatsby node.js. Uh, even though I left some comments in there for future stuff. Um, <clears throat> okay. So what does it do? This uses uh, this has. Uh, here we're using the Node API. Remember, we're, we're doing server-side rendering in Node. Um, that's why you have this weird exports.mont uh, syntax. <coughs> we're saying create, create pages. It's, uh, Gatsby's going to pass to us their Redux actions. Uh, Gatsby internally um, has all of its operations done via Redux, as well as a GraphQL helper to, uh, to, to transform uh, GraphQL requests. Okay. Then we're going to get the page template, the one that we just created. right? Uh, that's just your JS React component. Then we're going to uh, we're going to return a promise. The promise is GraphQL is a GraphQL query. It's exactly what we just queried just now. Um, all worked on Remark. Um, it has some optional fields. The fields don't really matter. Um, probably the, the one that does matter is that you want to sort by date. Um, so it's all defined here. You can play around with uh, if if you're not sure what it is, right? Uh, you can go over here and you can say like date. Uh, sorry, all markdown remark sort fields. Uh, where's the date? Date um, order ascending. So, so what what graphical is right is is a way for you to prototype this exact query, and you literally just copy and paste into here. Make sense? Okay. So, if you need anything else, if you need any other changes, just Study that, um, understand the API. If you need docs, it's over here. This is standard GraphQL stuff. Um, again, I don't have uh, time to cover that. And this is probably overkill because it's all auto-generated. But there's something in there that's going to be pretty helpful. Um, personally, I like to learn by just seeing what other people do. So I just study other source codes. Um, but it is very, very expressive and powerful because the amount that you have to code is just very, very minimal. You're just using tools, which is very nice. I think as coders, we should, we should try to do as little coding as we want, as we can. Um, so then the, the last part is very simple, right? Um, we dot then on the promise. So now we get all the results of the, of the GraphQL query, right? Um, assuming it has no errors, um, we're going to say for each. That's the for each that we wanted, right? Um, so for each node, each node is, is this thing, right? For each node, we have front matter dot date, front matter dot slug, front matter dot tags. We're just going to pass that in uh, as a as uh, as a slug, for example. Um, and actually, I should pass in more information than that. <laughs> um, yeah, I might regret this. But anyway, so uh, so then then we'll then we'll specify page template. That, that's the thing that we that we um, that we resolved earlier in Node.js. Um, with the net result that we're passing in everything to page template. Um, and we have this prop called data, um, <clears throat> and now and, and so um, so so now we've we've generated each page, and each page will be called first post, second post, third post, and um, all we need has been the path, the, the slug of these things. Inside the page, we'll do another query. This this is inside page template.js. We do another query. This is a page query. Um, you export const page query. That's a static. Uh, uh, typically, in a in a page, you have like a default export default, right? That's that's your that's what the page is. Um, if you want to have a page level query, you, you just export page query. That's a magic uh, variable that, that Gatsby looks for, um, and you and you do whatever query that you need. So, the incoming variable is the path. Like I know my path right now. Right? I'm going to query for all the things that match my path, um, and I need all this all this variable all, um, all this data. Um, so. What we're going to do, I hope that was right. Uh, I see some errors, so I might have some um, copy and paste errors. Um, yeah, I think I have copy and paste errors. Uh, um, or I might have slug. Uh, 
let's see. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I think I have a I think I have a bug in here in my in my own in my own code. Uh, we'll see what we'll see what that is. So, um, I guess showing debugging is helpful. <laughs> so I'm gonna take look at this type. Um, I'm clearly specifying something wrong on the type. So I'm just gonna look for this type, and it says title slug date or tags. So I actually mean slug. Uh, I did not mean path. So um, the way to fix it is to just go to page template. And instead of path, I'm just going to say slug. <coughs> this should be also slug. Um, I think this is also slug. Yeah. Did you already fix it for me? <laughs> uh -huh. Hey, OK, so let's look, for, let's look at the 404 page. Um, assuming my, four, ah, my 404 page is still, OK. What, whatever your, ver I don't know what screwed up with my 404 page. I, I don't have time to look to fix it. Uh, but yours, yours should work. <laughs> um, let me let me try and refresh this and, and have a look. Um, no, don't leave. I swear, I swear, I promise. I'm, I swear, I'm good at this. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, you know what? I, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yarn build and I'm gonna show you the build result. Ah! Oh, did I mean date? What, what is this? Markdown remark front matter. Um, I think I, I think I skipped something. 810. What did I, what did I do? What's that? Oh, it should be slug? Yeah. Ah. All right, run the build. Um, Jesus, yeah, this is this is something I, I don't enjoy about um, <coughs> working this low level. Um, you, you do you do run into a lot of debugging, and you need to know what's going on. Um, but that's that makes that makes the future a lot brighter, actually. Um, all right, so I think the the path variable has to be named path because I name it path here. Um, cannot read property front matter of null. I see. Um, so markdown remark is null. What would that be null? <coughs> I'm not sure. Okay, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this uh, this build anymore. I'm sorry. Let's just let's just try to get it running on the on the dev server, and then I'll I'll fix the the, the production build. Um, cool. Second post. Um, all right. So, so my data, my data is off. Um, how I would, how I would fix this is just the console log it, because um, because I'm I'm expecting something which uh, doesn't seem to be there. So my data object is has data and it's markdown remark of null. Um, so so something in my query is not working. It's not uh, it's not right. Um, so how I would debug this is I'll go in my page template, um, go over here. I think this is it. Uh, I need my path variable. If you spot anything I'm doing wrong, let me know. <laughs> Uh, first post. Yeah, I have my first post. Okay, so um, so right now I'm trying to debug like why my markdown is uh, my markdown remark here. My my markdown remark here is null, um, and I and I don't expect that to happen. Um, basically, because I think something is not matching uh, correctly. Um, therefore, I need to figure this out. So so. If all this is correct, this query works. That means I'm not getting the, the path query that I that I want. Um, I suspect it's because I'm not getting this uh, page. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, let me just ninja <laughs> ninja debug. 
Okay, so, so I have my slug working. Um, that's helpful. Uh, anyone see it yet? I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I, I think this should be working. Um, First post, second post. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Um, yeah, just give me a, give me a second while I figure this out. But um, in general, the the plugins. Uh, are the diff are the hardest part of of um, Gatsby, which is um, why I should have prepped for this more. <laughs> um, okay, slug. You know what? Because I, I, I think I changed the the name of of the thing from slug to post. <sighs> I shouldn't have done that. I like to I like to call it uh, slug rather than post. Oh, oh no, never mind. Half. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm fixing and fixing. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to remove all mention of, of slug because it used to work before. Uh, and then I, I uh, intelligently changed things at last minute. Don't do that. Um, so. <coughs> Still cannot read from it or no. Um, if anyone, if anyone's experienced with Gatsby and sees something wrong, uh, please shout out the answer because I'm a bit lost. Um, yeah. Anything? Yeah, so the, the page query, I, I, can, I can get the exact thing that I want. I'm just running the query. This, this should be the query. It's not now. So that means that I'm, I'm getting the wrong uh, info here. Um, yeah. Yeah, OK, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the docs for page query. Sorry, I just like, configured the wrong thing. Um, Feel free to read like the rest of uh, Gatsby plugins. So I'm going to figure this out. Don't worry. Give me a sec. Um, Gatsby page query. Uh, fortunately, the docs are pretty, pretty handy. Um, so there's a way to um, have the input. Ah. So we can pop. So sorry. No, I'm still figuring it out. If anyone knows what's going on, let me know. Um, you need to pass the context. What do you mean? Uh, did I not? Did I not do that? To be honest, I think context is for other stuff. Um, give me a sec. Yeah. 
Yeah, yes, stupid SEO. Yeah, I fixed it. We need to pass context? Yeah. What am I passing? Um, context path. Ah, uh, one line. Motherfuck. I, I cheated by looking at my star. Uh, okay, well, that was super annoying. Uh, you needed to pass context into the path. So basically, uh, inside of Gatsby node, um, we have that string. We need to pass this string so that it can be the, the source of that query uh, for the page template to query things with. Um, TIL, right? TIL. So now we have a different error. That's progress. Um, Huh? I think I just need to refresh. I think I already fixed it. Huh? I think I already fixed it. Okay. Shoot. What's um, up? I'm not really sure that what, what did you already make the change. Yeah, uh, let me just refresh to confirm that I am completely fucked. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, look, look at this. That's a cache error. This happens. So w sometimes um, the cache invalidation fails because you're making some uh, edits that are, that are off of Gatsby node. Um, I need to just delete the cache and rerun again. Huh? Yeah. Um, that's, that's one of the problems that, that people experience with Gatsby will, will understand uh, is cache invalidation is hard. Um, it's still, it's still not, uh, okay, come, come help me. <laughs> yeah, Kay. so uh, what I made change from Yo, I think, you're, you're using a Slug one, right? So, yeah, I changed uh, it from Slug. The, the slug. Okay, so let's, let's change it back to Slug. Um, you start from the Gatsby nodes. Huh? Hang on. I, di I didn't mess up anything like uh, yeah. with the MD fault. Yeah, that's my fault. Okay. So from the uh, Gatsby node, yeah. um, this one is needed to be uh, slot because yeah. if you're looking to the... Um, yeah, I know. I just changed it around because I thought that um, I didn't want to uh, yeah. confuse the, the things. And then uh, on the create page, I think, I'm not really sure, but I look into the doc, uh, you needed to send the path. Yeah. You think that's it? And uh, on... The button. Oh, there's no slug here. Oh, fuck. Yeah, you need it to send the slug. Man, I hate JavaScript. Why can't we do this TypeScript? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, that's it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <coughs> um, yeah, I've I've run into this kind of thing a lot, um, and it, it does it does it does really suck. Hey. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I swear I know Gatsby, guys. <laughs> um, but the idea, the idea is there, right? Like, um, hopefully I brought you through the, pro the process of consume, transform, and then uh, have a template, and then you inside of Gatsby Node.js programmatically uh, run through and, and generate. Um, there's a lot of glue pieces that things can go wrong, um, and you have to be careful. It doesn't throw an error. For example, just now, one of my mistakes, um, one of my mistakes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this as well so you can just uh, git pull. Um, <laughs> my, my commit log is just fix, 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 fix. Um, um, okay, you can git pull now. Um, but, but, um, but basically, one of my mistakes is I didn't have a variable called slug defined here. Um, and I just, I just said slug. Uh, I tried to be fancy, right? I tried, to, I tried to be ES6. And I just said slug. Slug is not defined. And it didn't throw an error. Um, <coughs> that's that's going to be fixed. Like they're they're uh, they're working on the error messages, um, but you just have to be aware, of it, especially because you're not working in uh, any sort of type checking system that uh, these these kinds of things might pop up. Just be very uh, careful what you're what you're wiring together. Um, <coughs> again, they're plugins. So what we're doing right is we're actually writing a small plugin for ourselves. Uh, gets this this every plugin has access to the same API, the Create Pages API. Um, the create node API on create page lifecycle hook. Um, all these things can be bundled up into a plugin. So if I wrote this plugin, I can publish it on NPM. You can install it, and it will be automatically run for you. 
So you don't have to code this. This is low level custom code. That's why it's so funky and weird, because you can do whatever you want. Right? Um, but the goal is to, to take, the, take this low level API, build on top of it with plugins, and with plugins, build on top of that with themes. Um, so I'm, I'm ev we're eventually going to go there. So um, I'm very behind. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so I want you to get to this, this, this stage. Um, have some navigation. If you want to have a blog index like with all the markdown files, um, go ahead and do that. Um, if you're feeling adventurous, uh, go ahead and do the image uh, plugin as well, the image transformation. Um, I have a uh, Gatsby 3A, the Gatsby image uh, docs. I don't expect to cover this here, but uh, definitely go try it out on your own. Um, just to give you an intuition of why you want to use Gatsby image, these images are one of the uh, big performance bottlenecks in a site. Um, uh, typically, like even my company is, is <laughs> guilty of doing this, that we'll, we'll publish like a super fast site, but then a two megabyte image right, that no one, no one, no one needs. Um, so what Gatsby image does is it transforms resizes and, and, and serves the right one based on, on, your, on your client. Um, and, and it has these nice uh, progressive loading features. So this is the blur up effect. Let me refresh. You see that blur? You see that blur? So it, so it just shows that blur in, in an inline SVG. And then once the image loads, it just replaces it, hot swaps. Um, I like this around the background color one. This fades in. Very nice. Trace SVG shows the trace, and then it fades in. Right. Um, these are all pre-processing stages where you have a, a source image file, transform, create all this like random crap, and then, and then have Gatsby image serve it for you. Uh, WebP, I don't know what that is, just whatever. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> there is a shit ton of, of functionality stuffed in here. Um, basically all to make your user experience fast, but it also looks nice. Um, I think that's very impressive. I think it's, uh, it's, I've seen it used in a bunch of e-commerce sites. Um, I do want to give you some inspiration. Uh, so. Uh, if everyone knows of Harry's, the Razor startup, um, they actually started, uh, they actually launched their female brand. Uh, this is the Gatsby site. Um, and, and, it, and, it, and it serves, you can see this, this fade in effect. Um, that's also progressive loading. Um, you can tell if something, a site is Gatsby or not with this Chrome uh, plugin. Uh, it just shows, it just shows a purple G. Is that yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also, it's a React site. Uh, it's not a Netlify site. I don't know, I have, I have a bunch of these to, to, sn to sniff the headers. But you can actually look at the elements and, uh, and just go like, Gatsby, you can see. Oh, generator, Gatsby 2.0. Um, so, so you know, you, like, there are, there are a whole bunch of examples. Oh, I should also give you, OK. I'm really bad at this. Um, that's why this is not my full-time job. But <laughs> here's, the, here's the example of sites you can build with Gatsby. I should have started with this. Um, the React JS docs is, is in Gatsby. You can clone it and, and look at look at what's in there. <laughs> I should have fucking done this. <laughs> uh, Airbnb's data science blog, Impossible Foods, the, the fake meat, uh, the vegetarian meat thing. Um, Braun.com is, is on Gatsby. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it's mostly static sites, right? mostly marketing sites. Um, but increasingly, you're going to get um, dynamic uh, applications as well. Um, so let's see if there's any API sites. Oh, uh, this is more for like SendGrid and. Um, okay, so um, yeah. Well, we're gonna get to that part in the serverless section. Um, I just want you to go through uh, the pain that I just went through, <laughs> um, uh, and we have 20 minutes for that. I'll set I'll set some timers, and then we'll reconvene at 3:30. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Wade, for that. Uh, I, think, I think one of the purposes that I had you clone all those sites is I really want you to look at those, the source codes for those things. Um, and I've given you the rough framework to understand what's going on in, in, in there. It's a lot of Node. It's a lot of GraphQL makes inside of Node. It's a lot of, like, is this undefined? Yeah, all right, let's go <laughs> fix that. Um, but just keep in mind it's low-level stuff. And we will build, we'll, we'll build up over time, and we'll just start using each other's plugins and, and all that. In fact, I really want you to, to look at plugin source code as well. Uh, this is a really good exercise to understand that there's no magic. Um, so just pick any random plugin. Uh, I'm going to pick a, a source plugin. Let's just call it Shopify. Um, Gatsby source Shopify. 
Okay, it's an official plugin. I'm going to view plugin on GitHub. Uh, so this is maintained by the Gatsby team. Inside of here, um, it's got some readme, it's got some package JSON. Um, nothing much. Like it, it can install its own uh, dependencies, right? Um, and inside of the source code, what do you have? It's Gatsby Node.js. It's the thing that you just wrote. Um, so essentially, it's just nested Gatsby projects nesting, nesting, nesting in, in and of itself. Every plugin um, can basically just run this code for you. Um, but when, when you're a user, you just use it as Gatsby source uh, Shopify. Um, <coughs> there's a lot more APIs that we did not cover, um, but definitely just <coughs> get a sense of um, what these, uh, what plugins are are just presets of uh, things that you already, you could write yourself, but um, you only write it as a last resort um, or because, you know, people haven't written the thing that you want it to write. Um, okay, so where are we at? <laughs> Jamstack. Uh, so we should be at four uh, Gatsby themes. Okay, so this is a very short one uh, because it's a, it's a feature that has not been released yet, but it's the biggest thing that has ever happened to Gatsby, um, and I would not be doing my, my job right if I did not tell you about it, at least. Uh, so uh, plugins on steroids. Uh, so plugins can, can implement Gatsby Node.js, Gatsby Browser.js, Gatsby Config.js, Gatsby, Gatsby SSR.js. Those are all the individual APIs for different modes of rendering from uh, the, the SSR side to the browser side. Um, what Gatsby themes do is their plugins plus uh, presets of components. Um, so they ship for you. So um, there's, there's a bunch of reading that you can do. I'm just going to show you the theme that I've been working on. Uh, this is the source code for that theme. Um, and I want to see, I want you to see how less, how little code that is. Like, I intentionally structured it this way because you, I want you to feel the existing pain of the low-level code. Uh, and I demoed it for you myself, uh, not on purpose. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is a site. Um, this is how it looks um, in, as, as a deployed site. Um, and typically, you'd have to have a whole bunch of code uh, just to make a site like this, right? Um, again, it's, it's reading from, it's, uh, it's, it's applying syntax highlighting to code. Uh, it's ha it has, uh, you know, the emoji stuff. Um, and it's got an overwritten component. So the source code for this is literally just Gatsby config.js. I have my site metadata. And then I have a theme. That's it. I don't have anything else. I have no uh, page generation code, the, the, the stuff that I, I muddled through earlier. Um, that's fine. That could be a plugin. What separates it from a theme is that my source slash uh, pages, um, actually not, not the pages, let's just say components. I only have one thing, bio. That's the, only, that's the only component that I have. Because I've overwritten this bio component. This is the bio component. Everything else comes from the theme. So let's look at the source code of the theme itself. <coughs> so this is Gatsby theme dev blog demo. Let's look at Gatsby theme dev blog. Um, so inside this theme, I have basically cloned uh, Danny Ramov's uh, site. And I included all the source components. It's got a whole bunch of them, right? Layout, whatever. And I said, all right, I only want to overwrite or shadow the bio component. The bio component, this is the source site, right? This is the bio component. I say I want to replace it with my own, right? So the only thing I have to, uh, only, only thing I have to specify is my own bio component, source components slash bio.js. And I can write whatever I want. I put my name in there because I can take credit for it. <laughs> um, um, but but you see you see the you see the, the theme potential that um, by default I install and I can get layout, I can get panel, I can get the SEO element, and it all just ships uh, with my theme. So <coughs> it, it's a plugin on steroids. The goal for Gatsby, the what the Gatsby team told me is that um, you're, the, the goal is for you to be able to install them side by side. So right now I have um, my Gatsby config. I have only one theme here. But what if you can install an e-commerce theme alongside your blog, alongside your marketing site, and then it just all composes together nicely. Um, 
I think right now that is a pipe dream because all these things are completely unspecified where, where things clash. Um, so we're all going to have to get together as a community to decide what the standards are because these, um, all, all that Gatsby is doing is providing the under, underlying, under, underlying tools. Um, but this is a really good open source opportunity for us to build the next WordPress by saying installable themes. And, and, then, and then the only thing you're responsible for is content, right? So, so um, I just want to sell you, the, sell you on, on the, the idea of themes. We're not going to have uh, time to implement it. Um, I think it's, uh, I have some videos, they have some videos. Uh, go through the docs um, and wait for the official launch. I think it's in one or two months. Um, but that's the Gatsby themes section. Um, any questions about themes? Like, do you, do you want it to do anything? That, no? <laughs> I, 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 feel like, uh, I feel like I've hyped it up enough. OK. Yeah. So when you shadow the component, do you need to specify any directories where you <coughs> resolve the Yeah. So, so if you see um, how the shadowing works, to avoid, um, so let's say I'm shadowing this theme. I have, I have uh, the, the name of the theme that I'm shadowing. Uh, slash components. So if I have multiple themes installed, it won't clash. Yeah. Um, and so, so the, yeah, the only thing, the only thing that, I'm, that I'm specifying is just my uh, content, right? So this is an extremely light blog. Like the only thing I'm install, I have like one dependency. I have, I have Gatsby, I have React, React DOM, and Gatsby theme dev blog. That's it. Four dependencies. Right. So. Um, Pretty, pretty bright future for, for Gatsby. Uh, I'm sorry about all the low-level stuff, and I made you go through it, because that's, the, that's what we have, right? Um, all this stuff. That's the underlying system. But if you think that this has a future, then uh, let's build on top of it and, and, um, and just make, it, make life easier for everyone. OK, so, um, so we're more or less done with Gatsby. Uh, that was a whirlwind intro. Um, one, thing I, one thing I'm really proud of uh, is that I actually uh, went through the source code of um, the Gatsby lifecycle method. Um, so in detail, what each API does, what each lifecycle hook is, um, you have the links for this in, in uh, Gatsby lifecycle.md over here. Um, if you really want to know which, what APIs you can take advantage of and what, um, what opportunities there are for um, you know, building cool, cool stuff, I'll definitely read like the, the process of how Gatsby works internally. Um, I just don't have time uh, to do that here. But um, I'm the guy that wrote the docs, so ask me anything, you know? Um, it looks a little bit nicer now. It's just super wordy because like, we have to like, talk to everyone. It's make everyone happy. Um, I'd rather just make myself happy. So. All right, so, um, okay, so, so now we're going to talk about serverless, uh, and, then, and, and that's uh, pretty much all we have time for together today. Um, <coughs> so this is a slightly, like, Gatsby solves, what does Gatsby solve? Gatsby solves perf issues, right? Like, it, it, you, it's data-driven documents. As much as uh, React is a function of data, uh, and it, it, you, you put data into React, and it outputs an app, Gatsby lets you put in data, and it outputs a site. Uh, and generates all those HTML files. Um, what it doesn't do is all the server, the, the responsibilities of a server, like executing uh, code. Um, so that's why, that's why Jamstack and serverless are very good uh, pairs of each other, because um, everything that Jamstack cannot do, serverless should be able to do. Um, so we're going to go through uh, a, sh a small presentation. This is not my presentation, but um, I strongly believe in it. Um, and this will give you a pretty solid understanding of uh, serverless, this buzzword that everyone is talking about. Um, mainly, uh, don't expect it to do everything yet, but every single year, things get easier and easier and easier. We used to worry about cold start problems. We don't anymore. Any, anything you hear about cold start is probably wrong. Um, go talk to the Cloudflare workers, people. Um, they start in eight milliseconds. It's insane. Um, so. So this is an, uh, an area of intense research, um, and that's, that's why uh, we want to talk about it today. All right, let's see if I can pull up the slides. Um, slide URL is there. Um, you have the link as well, so don't, don't, don't uh, worry about it. Um, <coughs> let's talk a little bit about why serverless. Um, again, uh, talking about the LAMP uh, slash mean model. Um, 
uh, imagine you have an app where it like that hits the top of Hacker News and it just gets a billion points, right? So all the all like just all people in the world come to your things and they're just streaming in like uh, massive traffic. Um, at at some level of scale, if you have a server, you're you're fine and it's a very simple programming model. Uh, with more, you start sweating a bit, um, and then with extreme amounts, you, your server starts catching fire, uh, and then at some point, it will just go down. It will get the hug of death or uh, the slash dotted or whatever, or the Reddit hug of death, depending on what generation you grew up in. Um, Chrome, I don't, Chrome uh, can run on a memory. I, I don't know about this. I, this is not my slides. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, like, the point is like, web architecture is um, as convoluted, as, convoluted as, as it is. If we're going to reconstitute this, we actually have to uh, come up with a different architecture um, that's event driven. Um, so we're going we're gonna to come uh, uh, to that in a bit. Um, service at its core, the reason you want to adopt service, um, auto scaling, pay per execution, uh, third party services like third party APIs, right? Um, and you focus on business logic, not like scaling up and scaling down your, uh, your servers. Um, as well as event driven workflow. So uh, this, is the, this is the key part to understand that um, anything that you used to do on a server, you can probably do with a webhook here and a callback to that webhook there. That's about it. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a, the, the rough idea. Uh, especially cron jobs. A lot of people don't understand that cron jobs are free, basically, because you can call like a webtask.io, give it an endpoint, it will just ping it uh, on, a, on a regular basis if it responds. Um, oh, OK. Um, but like cron.io, uh, cronjob.org. Um, Basically, if you need recurring services, it's also, do it's also doable without a server. You don't need a server to like, uh, set, a, set an infinite loop or something. Um, you can just literally ping an, an API, um, and you put all your business logic in that API and let it execute. OK, so um, in, in other words, like you want servers to be extracted away from the developer. You're writing just the business logic. Um, and I really like this micro-billing thing, uh, because obviously you're not I don't want to pay like you know that standard five dollar thing for a month. Um, like, if I'm not using it, I'm not using it, and it, I shouldn't have to worry about it at all. Um, it actually is is uh, there's a huge ecosystem. Um, I think that uh, a lot of people only talk about AWS, but actually there's uh, you know IBM Bluemix is is pretty interesting. Um, I think. Like there, there's some there's some up and coming names. I think Begin is is, is a very very interesting uh, serverless platform for, for people to explore, and obviously Netlify, the company that I work at. Um, serverless is not a so um, there's like two competing terms like function as a service and serverless. Serverless is actually the the sexier term because um, it's the one that pisses people off more. <laughs> um, um, so the people just talk about it. It's a really good talk. I I I, I like. Um, <coughs> like, what if you, you didn't learn the serverful method from the beginning and you started from serverless um, um, and, and, <coughs> and focus on the mindset that you're trying to um, work on business problems and not like the, the infrastructural scaling issues that, that a lot of people uh, have to deal with. Um, so uh, what can you do? What can you do? Um, what can you do with serverless? Um, anything with a asterisk, which is basically long running jobs. Uh, if you have a long running process like a machine learning job, uh, you probably want to stick that in, in a server somewhere. Um, uh, so functions, uh, as, as of right now, functions must complete execution in under 15 minutes. Uh, that used to be five minutes. Uh, that used to be 10 seconds even earlier. It just gets longer and longer. And now uh, with like step functions in AWS Lambda, you can actually uh, chop things up and execute them uh, in, in, uh, in sequence and in, in batches. Um, so uh, who is using serverless? Uh, all these guys. Um, I like uh, Coca-Cola, <laughs> like the, the, the stuff, the, the people that you'd think, New York Public Library actually, so I do a lot of meetups with them, um, and uh, they're surprisingly advanced. Uh, basically, uh, they have redefined themselves to be a digital library, so they serve like, something like three times more people online than they serve in, in person. Um, so they, they are definitely a tech company. Um, whatever. A lot of people, it's fine. Um, so how do you how do you get serverless? You choose your cloud. Uh, you pick your deployment tool. Uh, deployment tool can uh, most of us most of us the, this like second layer is what they call second layer cloud providers um, can compile to uh, uh, the, the the first layer. So it's it's regarded as like the first layer of cloud is like hard the hardware layer and the, and the second layer of cloud is software layer. Um, uh, this can be for multiple reasons like um, uh, portability uh, among them. 
there's a framework called serverless, the serverless framework, serverless.com. Um, it's not the same as serverless in general. Uh, it's just very good SEO. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, they just bought serverless.com and now they get everything. Um, <coughs> okay, so yeah, I already told you about the ecosystem. I think, um, I think one skill to learn is that uh, you should understand that instead of having a server where all the pieces of computing just came with it, like you had a hard disk, you had some memory, you had, uh, you had a running time. Um, now in, in a service environment, all the parts of compute are, are broken up. Um, so you have uh, functions for compute, you have storage like, a, uh, like your file blobs and stuff, your databases that are separate APIs. These are all separate APIs, even a state machine. Um, I think it's kin Kinesis. Anyone use Kinesis? Yeah. Um, I don't use it, but um, I was surprised that you can have a state machine as a, as a, as a service. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't use it at all. So I'm, I'm just uh, repeating uh, other people's words for them. Um, this, we even have specialized tooling to like, connect your Lego blocks together, the stuff that you don't have to use. Um, uh, and that's, and that's cloudcraft.co. That's, that's where you get all these like, charts that, that are very common in the industry. Um, so like, for example, spinning up a REST API, um, you can actually just uh, model REST API as an API gateway. Uh, it resolves to uh, several different Lambda functions. Uh, and if you need persistence, they can, they can be uh, backing. They, they can have, you can stand up a DynamoDB behind them. Um, GraphQL API, basically just one more layer in front of your resolvers. Uh, your resolvers are, are now your Lambda functions as well. Um, so I, I, pretty, I, I like that a lot, especially with um, Apollo um, Federation, the new thing that they just launched. It's very easy to break up your GraphQL schemas. Um, Webhook listeners, uh, same thing really. Uh, it's just that it's, uh, webhooks are, are ways for when, when, you, have a, when you, have, you have a job to execute, you fire off the job, it executes. Webhooks are a way for them to call back with the, with the completed information. And it tells you that, that you're completed. Um, so again, that you don't need a, a running instance. Um, authentication is a pain point for, uh, for serverless because a lot of the times you need a running uh, session on the server side uh, to do authentication. And a lot of people lose that model when you, when you go serverless because everything has to be stateless, especially when you're, when you're trying to execute uh, in a distributed fashion. If, dis if distributed execution is not a concern to you, which is not a concern to most people, um, then it's no issue at all. You can, you can just call back to a database. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of calling back, like calling to the off provider, off provider calls back to you, you confirm with that, with that particular token, and now you're allowed to execute something. Um, so uh, this, there's a, that's the difference between OAuth 2 and OAuth 1, uh, that there's, there's um, support for, um, that for these kinds of, of workflows. Um, yeah, that's a, this is the kinesis thing, I, which, I, which I, don't, I don't understand as like, all right, you can ingest a lot of things, and, and then so what? But apparently you can fire off uh, different events uh, based on the state of your, yeah. Yeah, I've I've never set this up, but um, I think I think you have to be in like the millions of traffic to <laughs> to be able to to start needing this. Whereas I'm more of a hackathon kind of guy. Um, uh, <coughs> let's let's see. Yeah, <laughs> abusing uh, serverless so because you can scale up in parallel all these functions at once, and you can all send them to to to, to a single uh, endpoint. Uh, you can actually use it as load testing, um, which is. Uh, what Nordstrom did for themselves ahead of their big sales, sales days. Uh, they call it serverless artillery, um, and you can go check it out. Which is true, right? Like you, um, I actually met this serverless user in uh, LA. He told me that he has, a, he has an e-commerce startup, and 95% of his traffic comes on four days of the year. So what, <laughs> yeah, th there's, no, there's no server, like the, the traditional server model doesn't really apply there. Um, so uh, form handling, OK. I, I'm, I'm like drowning you in all these use cases to really show that people have worked out the, the architecture. It's new, it's alien, it's hard. Um, but it will get easier every single year. And the fundamental sim simplicity and the, the cost model uh, should be compelling enough for those who want to try it. Um, for, for Jamstack, uh, there's no option. You, you have to use serverless to, um, to, to execute everything else. Um, so, I think, I think that's, the, that's the rough pitch. Um, I, I, I actually, I personally really like serverless framework. It's a single YAML file where you can uh, provision, like <coughs> a single YAML config file where you can provision like a serverless function, a, a database, 
um, anything that you might need as one single piece of code and then send it and deploy it. So it, it has that git um, commit and git, uh, git flow, workflow with it. So, um, so you can roll back and, and, um, and reprovision as, as much as, as easily as, as, as you can. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, you can, you can, based on that, you can provision anything like a cron job, infrastructure stuff, rest endpoints. Um, I, I just really like the flexibility of, of serverless uh, framework. Um, the cost is like cost calculators, and you can model them as uh, as such. Um, so here, uh, one of our one of our uh, uh, my co my coworker side projects is a, uh, has a thousand daily active users, uh, twenty API calls a day. It costs him six dollars a month, um, and it scales up and, and down uh, whenever whenever he wants. Um, so that's that's super nice. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the overall pitch. Um, I think that it's very it's very um, raw like in, in terms of like um, what I can present to you because it's highly dependent on the platform and the provider. I'm trying to give a general intro for anyone who hasn't uh, really had that introduction to serverless. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump back to, to the slides. Um, I really like, um, <coughs> so <coughs> if you want the real sales pitch, uh, check out this talk by the uh, VP of AWS Lambda at AWS reInvent. Um, talking about all the different use cases from from real folks, um, and and just like the the, the pace of acceleration, um, if you're worried about lock-in, uh, the cost of uh, execution only goes down in in AWS land. Um, so uh, so it's pretty. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty sweet uh, stack to 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 make projects with, and and uh, eventually, you know, if you're if you're a serverless native company, um, I think I think that's that's probably a good bet long term. Okay, um, examples of apps you can build with Gatsby. So Gatsby plus serverless. Um, here are some. I don't, I don't have a lot, um, mainly because they're not open source. So I only focused on open source ones. Um, a lot of these are closed source because they're, they're actual companies. Um, the Gatsby store, when you are a contributor to Gatsby as an open source contributor, they'll immediately send you a token and you can redeem it for swag. Um, and and it's, all ex it's all done on this, on this store. It's an e-commerce store. Um, I've already claimed a bunch of shit. Um, I can log in, right? This, this breaks your model of a static site. Like, this looks like an app. This looks like there's a server behind this. There's no server. It's, gonna, it's pulling out my details. It's checking my <coughs> contributions to Gatsby. Um, uh, it no, it's no longer giving me any discount codes because I claimed everything. Um, <laughs> It checks, it checks their SKUs, um, choose the size, it has an order cart. Um, this is dynamic AF. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, uh, thousands of people use this. Um, they, have, they have more demos. Obviously, like, you know, this, these are, this is open source, so you can actually check it out. And, and you should contribute to Gatsby, because now you know uh, you have the basic knowledge uh, to do it. <coughs> Uh, but obviously, the um, my my go to my go to example is Shop Flamingo, where they're actually uh, trading uh, dollars for uh, for actual products, uh, and it's a real startup. Um, Gatsby Mail is a pretty interesting one. I don't know if um, I can log in. I don't think I can log in. Um, so this is uh, my actual mail. So uh, don't hack me. Um, fuck. What else can I log in with? I might be able to just, jeez, uh, okay. Um, I, think, I think the, the token for this expired, but um, do I have a video? Uh, no, okay. Anyway, email clients built as a Gatsby app. Just like super serverless, okay? Like, <laughs> um, um, because, and again, and again, I wanna make that comparison. Like, um, a lot of, some people, I really like this, but it doesn't appeal to everyone. Um, we have an existential war between uh, the web and closed platforms. Uh, like, and, and it was, it was, a, it was it, um, and so mobile platforms are, are winning because a lot of people spend their time on mobile, right? Like they want native, the native app experience. Um, if we can build rich clients that load quickly, um, we, ha we win a lot of that, that battle. And then we are, we are on, the, we're on feature parity in terms of access to APIs and executing stuff. We can do exactly the same things. So really, it's the, we need to work on the delivery mechanism for delivering mobile clients that are just as good as uh, like App Store clients, right? From the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Um, just as good, but way thinner because they're, they're, they're websites. 
right? So we don't, we don't have like the 500 megabytes that, that Facebook, doc, uh, Facebook app takes up. We just have 137 kilobytes. Um, so so we, need to, we need to engineer our way into, into that by code splitting, by, uh, by doing all the, the performance uh, stuff that Gatsby gets, gets you. Um, OK, <laughs> that's a lot of me talking. Um, so the, the really stupid uh, reach goal for me <coughs> was to get you to, uh, to try out uh, Amplify CLI. Um, so uh, if you, if you want to go ahead, uh, this is for people who want to mess with um, AWS. Um, and, and some of you cannot, so, so you can, you're free to mess with uh, Nellify as well, Nellify CLI. Um, but if you follow these instructions, uh, this, this is the remainder of the workshop. Uh, you're, you're free to go. We're, we're ending at 4.30 anyway. We have half an hour. Um, but I'm going to stay here. I'm going to help you through this. Um, basically, AWS Amplify is uh, all the services of AWS uh, put in your CLI, and it's very easy. to. It's just running one command to configure it. So I have here instructions to set up AWS Amplify. Um, for an existing project, you can amplify add off storage functions, API analytics, hosting, notification interactions, and there's more coming. Um, I think they, they, they just added video streaming the other day. Um, so you can do like HQ trivia. Uh, I don't know if you have that here. <laughs> anyway, um, so adding authentication, amplify add off. Um, and in the template that I give you in the, in, in the, in the repo, um, you literally just switch to the off, uh, off versions of all the, the, the off layout, off header, off whatever. Um, that's already in your GitHub repo. And then once you're done, always remember to amplify push. Whatever you're done configuring, new, ca new capability, always amplify push. So we have this for serverless authentication. We have this for um, serverless compute with AWS Lambda. You write your Lambda functions. Um, we have this for serverless storage if you're storing images, if you're storing uh, file, file blobs and stuff like that. Um, and at the end of this, I think that at home, you can make an Insta Instagram clone with all of this functionality. Using, using Gatsby, using this material UI theme, right? This is all, this is all you need. You got, you got Gatsby, you got this material UI theme, you got the um, serverless uh, storage. This is going to be super important, serverless storage of the files, and then you can display the images. Um, yeah, and then, and then authentication for, uh, for people who need to authenticate into their accounts. Um, so this is, this is the homework. This is the, you, if you want to get, if you want to like make money with serverless, <laughs> uh, if you want to make money with Jamstack, I think, I think this, is, this is where to, to learn. It has never been easier. Like no one, no one, no one works with AWS like this, right? It's usually like suffering through a whole bunch of like walkthroughs on, on the site. Um, now it's all in the CLI. Now there's a guided walkthrough um, and a very dedicated dev team. Um, and they have, they have helper libraries. So, OK, look at, look at how I access um, my uh, authentication. You see here, they've written all the helper libraries. You don't need to do anything. You just import off from aws amplify slash off. Shit. <laughs> right? And then off dot current authentic authenticated user, set user, whatever. That's it. That's stupid simple. Um, so I really like this. For, for APIs, you literally api.get the name of the API, and that calls it, right? So um, storage, OK, storage.get. You're, like, you're not even copying and pasting the, the ARN or whatever, whatever you have. Is this how you do your serverless stuff as well? Sorry? If you, if you do like serverless function, is that your the API one? Um, API, this is serverless function, API, yeah. api.get. Um, they just wrap it. They just wrap it for you, so you don't access the direct uh, URL. So yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. that's different from Netlify. Yeah. Yeah. So um, everyone has this. Google has something similar. Netlify has something similar. Serverless. Is, um, I think uh, AWS uh, probably is ahead by the most because they have a thousand people on this thing. Um, <laughs> Um, and they're, they're dead set on making all of AWS into this new paradigm of uh, literally run a single command to add that functionality, uh, answer a few questions, and you're done. Um, so I encourage you to try it out. That's the remainder of this workshop. I, try, I encourage you to try it out together with Gatsby. Um, and obviously, feel free to ping me on Twitter or GitHub uh, with questions. Yeah. OK. Um, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put on music, but uh, I'll, I'll be around. Raise your hand if, if you need help. <laughs>